the challenges are you look at there's a lot of irregularities in Pennsylvania. We we yep. know we know that. Um, and uh, there's going to be legal challenges there, there even are. probably more filed today. Another one's filed uh, this because morning at the, the Supreme the, Court. The, the, uh, state, um, the, the head of the state legislature is going to come out and announce a number of things potentially that went yeah. wrong. That could lead to more legal action as right. well. In Pennsylvania this morning, we filed, not we, but um, the uh, folks in Pennsylvania filed an emergency stay with uh, application for stay with Justice Alito. Uh, and that is focusing on this issue of the irregularities in Pennsylvania and the fact that we don't even know if the votes were segregated because now we find out that some, allegedly, some counties did not segregate the vote, although it was not an order that they do so. <clears throat> I want to be clear on that. It was it was guidance. They should have segregated it, but it was not an, Andy, the, no. the opinion by Justice Alito was only for three members of the court, and they just said in their briefs that that is what their guidance was. To, they, they don't have the authority to tell the individual uh, election districts what they have to do. The Pennsylvania authorities had said and made the representation uh, that they were going to segregate the disputed ballots or the ballots that came in that were allegedly illegal. And and Justice Alito alluded to that uh, when he when he spoke, but there was not an order of the Supreme Court uh, directing the state to segregate anything. I see several states that are close enough that you would expect these challenges to continue. Some of them will end up in recounts, and some of them uh, will be legal challenges. And, Jay, when when any election in any state is this close, no matter who's ahead, who's behind, that's what you would expect. And I would just, you know, one, one sort of thought on that. I think all of us benefit from that because our republic really depends on confidence in elections. And, and I did see a few things on election night that, quite frankly, uh, concerned me. Nevada and Arizona, to me, are actually the two that worry me the most, Ed, because uh, Pennsylvania, I know that we would have the legal challenges there. We I mean, have they, we have, I mean, we already have more some coming. Of them yeah. and more coming, yeah. but that's only going to work in court if they are outcome determined. If it explain to people yeah. what that so means. So here's what it is. The Supreme Court's going to generally be very reluctant to engage in a particular case if the, there's not a determination that, that the numbers impacted by that case would make the election outcome determinative. In other words, if the president were to hold on to Georgia, and hold on to Arizona, well, or, or, or to retake Arizona, and to retake Georgia, I guess, at this point. Then the question is, would, the, would, a, would Pennsylvania be outcome determinative? And the answer to that, depending on how it comes out, but let's say even if Biden's up 30,000 votes, yeah, probably is outcome determinative. Yeah. If, if Biden was up 250,000 votes or 300,000 votes, or if the president did not take Georgia... Right or there's, or in Arizona, Arizona Falls yeah or there's, Nevada there's Falls no, the nu- the numbers to get to 270 don't exist. The Supreme Court is very reluctant to, for example, to say we're going to stop counting. They wouldn't do that. They're not going to get involved in matters of elections unless ultimately it may make the determination of who wins or who loses the case. But generally, they stay their hand on those things and do not intervene as the states proceed. Uh, to count their ballots or not count their ballots, depending upon what state law and under the Constitution the legislature is supposed to make the law does. No matter who wins the outcome, uh, the, the, the president of the United States, whether it's a reelected president or a new president, needs the confidence of the American people to show that it was legitimate. I will tell you this. Uh, there are a lot of people in Washington, D.C. who think that the biggest problem here are, are, are was the ceasing of vote counting that did happen in several locations that night. When that process stopped on election night, that's where the confidence starts to erode. That's where the problems start to happen. So I think that's where most of the focus is here moving forward. You got to focus your attention on the vulnerable states. I think there was, I think Pennsylvania clearly is in that. We filed, uh, I filed, as you know, a motion to intervene in an existing case that's up there. The other side responded yesterday. We filed a response this morning and then we'll find out if we get to intervene. I'm sure if, if there's a real case in controversy, we're going to get to intervene. There may well be another case filed today in Pennsylvania. Don't know the details of it yet, working through that with the lawyers there on the ground. But that may be filed today, uh, show, pointing to irregularities in the voting process. If that lawsuit's filed, and I think it will be filed as long as this case, as long as it's viable, the question still becomes, is there a pathway to get there? The yeah. court, because Andy, the courts are reluctant. The Supreme Court's reluctant to get in to an election, unless, like in Bush versus Gore, where it was outcome determinative. 